Chapter 41 Weaknesses Strengths You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. This wasn't the end. Was it? Haya ahahe, the deep, gruesome voice echoed throughout the room, like thunder, growling murderously. What? Everyone opened their eyes wide in horror as they watched the dark cloud hovering above turn into something unspeakable. This. How, when, it. Oh, no. At this moment, everyone was looking around for hiding space. They looked at the ground, wishing to bore right through it as their bodies quivered in shock and fear. Even Gu and his family on the couch didn't know when, but they found themselves behind it in a blink of an eye. For some of the weaker or newer guards who saw this scene, hot wet fluid dribbled down their legs, as they honestly wanted to rush for the door right now. Earlier on, even though they had been shocked by Soda's situation, they hadn't seen the so dot called ghost yet. But now, seeing the dark cloud change its appearance bit by bit, forming into the ugliest and mouth dot puking appearance ever, they felt wanted to faint altogether. Bluff. Soda, Elvida, and a few others couldn't take it anymore. F asterisk asterisk asterisk. How could something be so ugly? Soda was the one most disgusted amongst everyone. So this thing was in him all this time. He shuddered and secretly swore that after this, he would pour an entire tube of toothpaste and mouthwash in his mouth for an entire month just to cleanse himself. Even Elvida was wondering if she would ever peck her son after this. Her heart was telling her yes. But her mind and body were like. No. At least, not until he was thoroughly cleansed. As for Gudu, Windok and Leiji, their entire bodies stood rooted on the spot, as they now realized how deadly and dangerous this world truly was. It was like they had been newly born calves. And in all honesty, it took every fiber of their being for them not to throw up or faint too. The cold refrigerated dot like air seeped into their bones, causing fear and panic to weave themselves into their bodies. And in no more than a second, they too felt their legs turn into water, just like everyone else's in this room. Rollin and Zhu Lin stood behind Butler Sheng, shaking so much that they subconsciously made Butler Sheng shake too. F asterisk asterisk asterisk. They were directly before the thing, all right. So how would they not fear? They looked at the calm Dorian and Butler Sheng and truly wanted to ask if their bodies and hearts were made of stone. Hello. Why aren't you scared here? Dovico don't you see what we see? Or could it be that beauty was truly in the eyes of the beholder? Butler Sheng, who had fought demons uglier than this last night face to face, was also appalled but not too fearful. He touched his right chest pockets as if assuring himself of something. Yes. With this always by his side, he felt more secure. Everyone was in a state of horror while watching the black smoke take form. And as expected, the final form was fifty times more terrifying than what they had seen so far, causing several others to faint. Plop. Plop, this was the true form of the hybrid water ghost. Haya dot ha dot ha dot ha 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 it laughed murderously, staring at Dorian coldly. Exorcist. You may have succeeded in damaging me a bit, but don't even think that you will be able to defeat me. Dorian looked at it calmly. Last chance. Give up. Instantly, the room became even colder as the evil ghost laughed angrily. He 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 he. Exorcist, you dare look down on me. Good. Good. Then I can only show you my might. Whoosh. Its dark shadowy figure dashed downwards towards Dorian, stretching its long, thin, bony hands and bales towards him. That's right. It was a hybrid ghost. A mix of both demons and ghosts. So it inherited some distinct features found in demons too. It smiled cruelly. Exorcist. You should know that water is my strength. And whenever there is water, you are bound to lose. Even your blood is made of water. After I smell and find an entry point on that body of yours, I will suck you dry. Swish. Dorian dashed to the side, avoiding the creature's claws. 
but the creature wasn't one to give up either. Swish. Swish. Swish, its attacks free stronger and stronger, slashing and extending his hands everywhere. Die. Exorcist. Die. Everyone watched the shadowy battle in shock, as they almost couldn't see anything. That's right. Dorian and the creature were so fast that it took all their concentration to see just a few of their actions and moves. Dorian jumped, slid, and did all sorts of maneuvers, dodging all the attacks. They were so shocked and awed that they had to give Dorian another eye of scrutiny again. But if they were impressed with just these moves, then Dorian's following actions had made them his fans. Swish. The evil ghost stepped back and paused arrogantly. At the same time, Dorian stood calmly on the other side of the wide circle, looking lazy as ever. Not even a single drop of sweat had formed on him, making the water ghost a little bit annoyed. Yes. With its strength, it just needed a large enough bead of sweat to penetrate Dorian's pores. But this bastard's heartbeat hadn't even raced up. So how was he supposed to form sweat? Nonetheless, it wasn't discouraged at all. Humans all had tolerance and stamina issues. So give it time, and he didn't believe that this bastard wouldn't sweat. Hey. Maybe he should try stimulating him. Thinking like this, the evil ghost smiled through his slanted mouth, revealing a very disturbing image to all. Heh, bold exorcist. If all you can do is dodge, then you will never be able to defeat me. You are weak and worthless. So come. Just accept your faith. It said, expecting Dorian to lash out and say things like. Never. But say, the script didn't play out as he thought. And Dorian only snapped his fingers, and a paper appeared in his hands. Magic trick. Everyone looked at Dorian in confusion. What would this paper do? Dorian looked at the evil ghost calmly before revealing a very playful yet mysterious smile on his face. Pray tell. Who said I've only been dodging this whole time? The evil ghost's expression turned grim. But before he could fully understand what was going on, Dorian made his move. Drew. Right before everyone's eyes, the paper in Dorian's hands glowed bright golden. And when Dorian moved his right hand from his chest outwards, a giant transparent golden hammer appeared. Thung. Everyone's eyes popped out of their sockets in reverence. I'll go. You can do this. Degree zero degree, Brum. Sacred heavenly fire, glow bright. Bam. On the hybrid's body, it then realized that some papers had also been placed on it. And now, they were glowing brightly as the sun. That's right. Its strength is water, hence the name Hybrid Water Ghost. But what happens when one places water by fire? Dorian waved his giant hammer around playfully, as the Hybrid Ghost had now been pinned in place mid-air. He smiled cruelly. Well, he did try to be nice, didn't he? Chapter 42 Payment Time you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Dorian spun his giant hammer wickedly while slowly advancing towards his target. And thus began a very disturbing sight for those who watched. Bam. Damn, you exorcist. You think this will deter me? Not a. Bam. Ah. How dare you. Boom. Bam. Boom. Stop. Stop. At least let me finish talk. Bam. You. Bam. Bam. Stop. 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 I said. Bam. 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 Blink. Blink. Everyone watched this scene with unfathomable expressions on their faces. No. They were just speechless. Something that had made many faint from sight alone was now being beaten to a pulp by this young master Tian. So how could they not be shocked? At first, listening to the creature's words, they thought things might get complicated, 
and Dorian might not even win. But who would have known that his victory would be so? I dot catching, bam. 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 Dorian hammered the several seals on its body as if hammering nails. And whenever it spoke, he would hammer its mouth as well. Noisy. Ah. The hybrid felt its entire insides burning non-stop as the heavenly flames quickly engulfed it from within. The flames seemed to grow larger within the hybrid as its body started swelling like a balloon. No. No. Stop. Stop. You bastard. It exclaimed in fear and pain as golden rays of light shot out of its chests, hands, mouth and entire body. Ha! Ah. It screamed and cursed before finally exploding into thousands of water droplets that sprinkled down like black rain. But what shocked many was that before the dark rain hit the ground, it turned golden and faded into thin air. Everyone cautiously looked around, not sure whether this was the end or not. Who knew it the bastard thing would sneak somewhere else in this room? Butler Sheng. Rollin. Julin. Yes, master. All three answered with respect and awe as they watched Dorian float down lightly. After watching the battle, Rollin and Julin realized just how powerful their master was. But more importantly, they also realized that they, combined with several others, might not even be able to leave a scratch on their master if battling against him. Very quickly, they guessed that this must have been what Butler Sheng, Biwo, and Haru had been doing that allowed them to grow overnight. Yes. They were still very much afraid. But they also knew that this might be because they were unskilled. Even after everything, they still wanted to join the Tian family. Someone could say they were crazy. But to them, there was always another side of the coin. What if after they left, they met other demons, spirits or any evil things and couldn't get Dorian's help because he was busy or out? Then what do they do then? They would just have to die and be devoured, right? Additionally, what if the moment the creature wanted to reveal itself to them was the moment when it decided to kill them? Now, they didn't even know if most strange out-of-nowhere diseases were the cause of monsters or just health. In fact, the issue was that they knew nothing. And when one knows nothing, they can't protect themselves or avoid troubles. Thus, apart from their loyalty to the Tian household, those were just a few more of their reasons for staying. They also wanted to be strong enough to protect themselves, their team and the Tain household. Like so, the duo looked at Dorian in determination while waiting for his orders. Dorian looked at them and chuckled. Smart. Butler Sheng. Rollin. Zhu Lin. Our work here isn't done. We still have five more people to cleanse. And you three will handle them. Thap. Thap. Thap Dorian quickly threw several papers at them before voicing words that only they could hear. Everyone watched them silently in confusion. At first, they could hear them. But suddenly, it all went quiet. Of course, everyone found it strange that it went quiet. But they seemed to have forgotten that in the first place, for everyone to hear what everyone else was saying in this large room was already an abnormal feat with such a grand hall, people shouldn't be able to hear each other from that far away or even right at the back without yelling. So now that Dorian was talking directly with his men, everyone else far away couldn't hear a single thing. But when Dorian's group was done, they seemed to be able to hear again. Dot so, they must be using magic, right? Very quickly, Dorian and the rest stepped closer to Soda's gang before settling their sights at Windok, Leiji, Gudu, Elvida and another close guard. And when they saw him, their expression turned anxious. Grandmaster Tian. What's wrong? Dorian placed his hands on his chin and looked at them deeply. You five. Roll up your sleeves and place your hands forward. Instantly, they did it without even wasting time. Even Windok was fast as well. Dorian then tapped their hands, revealing an unspeakable sight that caused them all to be petrified. W. W. Was that a face? Those who saw this once again felt like puking. 
such a thing can really make one want to cut their arms off. Beads of cold sweat formed on Gudu's forehead as he looked at his arms in horror. He was so terrified that his legs couldn't stop shaking. Those watching would never understand how it felt to see such a thing on your own hand. His eyes darted maniacally as he really freaked out. It wasn't just him, but the rest too. Elvida was just the worst. Get it off. Get it off. Ugh. My eyes are bleeding from seeing it. Please, can you get it off? She felt like from this day forth, she would never look at her hand the same again. Ugly. Dorian looked at their hands silently. As expected, they had been marked. Meaning after the hybrid devoured soda, it planned to jump to its next marked targets within the same household. And like so, it planned to finish them all. Of course, with the hybrid dead, the marking's use was no more. But, it still wouldn't fade just yet. At least until a few months. But that was the thing. During this time, such markings without an owner were just like dangling prey to fish on a hook. More water ghosts would want to step in and replace the dead one. So he had to destroy it all now. Dorian looked at his men and gestured for them to begin. For marks like these, a few flame talismans would take care of them. So he allowed them to deal with such minor things. Rollin and Julin placed their papers on their victim's hands and watched it glow bright golden. Steam poured out as well, and their hands began red, as if sunburned. And soon, the mark started fading and fading until the talisman papers no longer glowed again. Everyone swallowed hard. So. It was done. Degree underscore degree, Dorian nodded, and all five felt alive again. Thank you, Grandmaster. Thank you, Grandmaster. With warm smiles of gratitude, everyone was genuinely thankful. Hell. That thing would have definitely come for them too, after some time. So they had just escaped death. Dorian waved his hands calmly before looking at the bags of salt already opened. He opened them for these five, as well as soda. That's right. They had to fill bathtubs with water and three cups of the salt he just enchanted words on. It should be done in the daytime and never at night. Soda will have to steep in salted water five hours a day for a month and a half. As for the rest of you previously marked, you'll only stay an hour in the tubs. And you'll do this for three days. As for the rest of the salt, pour the contents around all fountains and open water spaces in the estate. And in the morning, the salt will disappear, meaning you need to replenish it every morning for the next month. Yes, Grandmaster Tian. Gudu, Windok and the rest answered while taking note of every little instruction. Who knew that their home was so infested with evil? Like so, Dorian gave his instructions like a doctor talking to a patient. And Butler Sheng was writing his words as subscriptions for the clients too. Dorian looked at them and suddenly smiled. Well, it was payment time. And this time, the money he fairly racked up was close to what he wanted. That's right. He needed land. But not just any land. No. Dorian wanted an island. The academy had to be on an island. Chapter 43 An Exorcist's Oath You are listening at NovelFull.audio Dorian lazily sat before snapping his fingers again. Snap. Two other books left the open wooden box, with one flying towards his men and the other flying towards him. Good. With that, the books all opened wide to the pages Dorian wanted them to be. And as he spoke in prices, costs and why they were charged, the books in the trio's hands flipped from page to page as well. Firstly, the hybrid ghost he fought against was a class 2-1. With ghosts, they were ranked from class 1 to class 9, before reaching the breeding class and finally, the deadliest of all, the humongous class. But, one should know that ghosts were weaker than halos, ghouls, hellhounds and all the other demonic and evil entities. Thus, the highest ghost level was nothing compared to how deadly other underworld creatures could be. And this ranking was only for ghosts. 
ghosts were the only forms with different danger dot ranking systems. The other underworld creatures followed a different one. That said, for a class 2 hybrid ghost, there was a standard fee. Following that, Dorian charged for every talisman he used today. Including the ones he used in making the numerous bags of salt sacred. The use of spell energy, and even the clearing of the seals and markings, all went into the cost. One should know that Dorian's strength wasn't at his peak, and in truth, he had used a lot of strength to deal with this hybrid ghost. The thing was that he hadn't fully recovered his strength from last night's event. And he planned to use an entire day or so to prepare himself. But this morning, he was already brought in when he was still in his recovery time. So he had just barely been able to make it. Looks like I'll have to increase my strength fast, he thought while still coming up with the price list. In all fairness, cultivation was expensive, and the energy used up alone, as well as the materials he would need to get himself back on track, were indeed pricey. Like the 2.100 year old ginseng and so on. As for the candles used today, the Gu household wouldn't pay for the entire thing since not all the wax had melted. No they were just paying a standard service fee per candle used today. Back in this world, scamming or overcharging was near impossible. Why? Because before one became an exorcist, they had to take a heavenly oath to be fair and just, or they would get killed by the heavens. Now, they were drawing powers from above to fight evil. So if they took the powers from above to do evil instead, the heavens were always watching. And because of the oath, they could get stuck by lightning and die in an instant. Of course, this was only the case if they took the oath. This was why many organizations in his former world had people take the oath to be fair, just, never collude with the underworld creatures or do bad. But, as one would know, there were still rogue exorcists that refused to enter the academies but chose to find ways of stealing exorcist materials instead. Yes. They wanted to learn and maybe even overpriced people and get rich without worrying about any immediate heavenly punishments. Some of them also turned into evil cultivators, doing evil things for wealthy clients too. Some even refined other innocent lives just to extend theirs too. But what they didn't understand was that even though they wouldn't be punished immediately. The heavens were always watching. And it might take two to even ten years for their uppings to come. But when the heavens struck, it was fiercer than when taking the oath. One could get dragged to hell to take on the punishment for millions of years before getting a chance for rebirth. And even when reborn, they might not be humans again but caterpillars, chickens or something else. They had lost their right to be humans. And only after suffering several more lives as prey, would they get the chance to be humans again. But even at that, they might still get sent to an awful world where they would like terrible lives. The punishment for an evil exorcist was harsh. Thus, it was better to take the oath to constantly remind oneself to stay on the right path. Provided one didn't use the powers of the heavens for evil, then things were good. Of course, mortal strengths like brain power, winning arguments, and self.defense weren't technically okay. So one would just be punished by the heavens as any regular mortal would. It wouldn't be as harsh as being punished as an evil exorcist. Very fast, Dorian waved his hands, and words began forming on a paper. He fairly priced and tallied everything up before flicking the paper to Gudu. Binoel.m, here. My price. Gudu looked at the price and didn't think much of it. Six million. For all he saw today, he even felt like it was a little cheaper than he was expecting. But what he didn't know was that if Dorian were stronger, then the price might have been way less costly as well. Today's event had also taken a toll on Dorian. Gudu looked at the price and felt it was just alright. His wife spent such amounts on bags and clothes alone. So what more of this? He even decided to add an extra 4 million as a gift of gratitude, rounding it up to 10 million. This gift was also there to establish a friendship with Dorian. This way, if they needed his help again, he would willingly come over, right? As a businessman, Gudu felt like this was a move that he needed to make. 
Dorian looked at them and smiled. Good. Easy clients, easy payment. Chapter 44 The Little Girl You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Looking at the price, Gudu had no qualms whatsoever. Grandmaster Tian, say no more. I'll have my account transfer the money now. With that, he took out his phone and called his accountant. Butler Sheng also stepped forward to provide the information for the transfer too. Good. Once everything was finalized, Gudu quickly thought of something else that was also critical too. Berm. Grandmaster Tian. Is there a better way we can reach you? Click. Everyone's thinking bulbs turned on. Yeah. Is there a better way to reach him? Soda was the first to react. Grandmaster. I, I, I still have you on QQ chat. So can we contact you through there? Dorian thought about it more before nodding. Hmm. You can. Great. Thank you, Grandmaster. Soda said excitedly before looking at his family proudly with his nose sticking heavenwards. Hmph. I have the Grandmaster's QQ account. Do you? Dot underscore dot. Brat. Gudu looked at his son and almost shoved the idiot with his shoe. Did this fool forget that he only kept the Grandmaster QQ earlier on to keep his enemy closer? Windock and everyone else smiled when they saw the interaction between the duo. Yes. Things were now back to normal. To an extent. Because Soda's next move caused them to go into shock. Plop. Grandmaster. I, I want to be your disciple. Silence. Everyone blinked and opened their mouths in shock. Soda. What are you doing? Elvida and Gudu were the first to react. Their son had just come out from the hands of that thing. And now, he was running back into the fire again. Their hearts panicked as they watched him kneel before Dorian. Son, quit playing and stand up now. Soda looked at them and shook his head. No. I'm not playing. I have my reasons. I want to become the Grandmaster's disciple. Soda said before clenching his fists hard. Dorian raised his brow at the unexpected turn of events. Host. Host. This is a good thing. The more people you gather, the more allies we have to fight in our cause. Dorian revealed a slight smile on his face. Yes. It would. Ah. Host. So you agree too. This is the first time the host is being nice to. Shut it. I'm thinking. Dot, dot t carrot t, dot. Why was its host always so fierce? What wrong did it do in this cosmic world to get saddled with its host? But. But. This should be considered progress, right? Yes. It was better than the times when the host didn't even let him say three words. So this time. The host actually allowed him to talk this long. That means that their relationship was getting better. With that, the system's mood happily picked up again. Soda knelt in silence, feeling like he was drawing in anxiety the more Dorian stared at him. His body started trembling, and he really felt the weight of weight. It was like waiting for one's final year results to come out. Of course, everyone else turned silent too. Tick. Talk. Tick. Talk, silence filled the room as time seemed frozen in place with just the constant beatings of the grand clock. The air was heavy and filled with anxiety. Yes. The weight was killing them all. And Dorian, the protagonist, was still deep in thought while staring at the young man before him. Soda. Yes, Grandmaster. Soda responded loudly with a hint of fear in his voice. Are you sure of your choice? Yes, Grandmaster. All right. I can accept you. But not as a disciple. So, Soda. Are you still willing? Soda thought for a while before nodding. Yes, Grandmaster. I am. 
Good. Dorian nodded. Right now, he was still too weak and too busy to take in any disciples. First, diligently cleanse yourself with salt baths. And by the time your treatment is done, I will accept you into my academy. Eh. Everyone looked at Dorian in confusion. Academy. Everyone watched Dorian leave, with different thoughts in their minds. The first person to arise from their stupor was Windock. Please, Grandmaster. Let us escort you out of the premises. Dorian shook his head in denial. No it's all right. Windock's lips thinned before finally nodding and talking into his walkie-talkie. Allow Grandmaster Tian to leave the escort without any hitch. If anyone bothers him, they will have to answer to me, understand? Yes, boss. Replied those around the various gates and stations scattered around the estate. They didn't know or understand why the boss suddenly had a change of heart. But they dared not neglect his orders. How strange. Well, even though Dorian didn't want to be escorted out, he couldn't prevent everyone from walking him to the building's front entrance. Butler Shing opened the vehicle door for him while the other two sat in front, ready to drive away from the estate. Soda and everyone else watched them leave, with different emotions in their minds. Today was an unforgettable day. At the same time, Dorian's last words also echoed in Soda and Gudu's minds. So, he was going for the Mavel auction tomorrow evening. Good. Then they too would go. Gudu looked at his determined son silently. Soda. I know and understand your reasons for learning. And that's why I will approve of your choice. The future may be an uncertain field now. So make sure you learn under Grandmaster Tian diligently. Soda nodded deeply. I know, Dad. Gudu smiled. Good boy. I will send you to that academy with a few others. Our Gu family will not be left behind. Hmm. With that, both father and son had a heart dot to dot heart talk, while mother Elvida was still in tears at the back. But she knew that she couldn't do much to stop their decision. Her son would be joining the academy. Virarimum. Dorian's vehicle finally left the estate and headed straight for a well dot renowned medical center. That's right. It was time to purchase or find any spiritual herbs around. He planned to do a few more things before the auction tomorrow. With that, Dorian and his men were once again on the move. But not too far away from them, within the central park. A little child and her nanny were playing around the park merrily. The little girl ran around the Everdot green fields, enjoying the morning air to her heart's content. There were other families not too far away from her. But all in all, the park wasn't crowded at all. It was still 11 a.m., and the busiest time had yet to come. The little girl blew bubbles in the air while running around in circles. And her nanny calmly sat on a wooden bench, reading her favorite novel. The nanny was so engrossed that she didn't even notice the little girl run into the woods behind them. And by the time she looked up, the girl had vanished. No. 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 A wave of panic filled the nanny's heart as she flung her book away and abruptly stood up, darting her eyes around maniacally. Dee Dee, Dee Dee. Where are you? Dee Dee, Dee Dee. Swish. Swish. Swish, the young girl pushed all the bushes away while chasing something she wasn't too sure of. She had never seen it before, and it looked so cute to her. A child's curiosity was a truly unstoppable force, as she wanted to get close to the thing at all cost. And by the time she realized it, she now found herself out of the bushes, looking at a sizable dark pond of water. Eh. Where did the thing go? The girl looked left and right but didn't see anything. But then, she heard it again. This time, it came from the water. Itchem itchem. The water looked so pleasing and mesmerizing to her that she couldn't resist walking into it step by step. And soon, she was fully submerged in the dark waters. But suddenly, the waters shook violently, 
as if there was a battle underneath. Burahach, something was happening underneath as countless bubbles formed at the water surface. The nearby squirrels looked at the scene with a strange light in their eyes, taking countless steps back. Like boiling water, the bubbles continuously formed around the particular spot the girl submerged into. And after a few more seconds, the bubbles faded. Then, the girl who had stayed underwater for what seemed like an eternity, finally emerged from the waters again. Tup. Tup. Tup, water dripped from her clothes as she calmly walked towards the shores. And this very moment, several voices echoed out from the bushes. She's here. She's here. We found her. Oh. Dee Dee, why are you wet? Why aren't you talking? Are you cold? Is that it? The nanny quickly hugged the girl and turned to the park rangers beside her. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The nanny and the park rangers continued talking, but the little girl in her nanny's embrace suddenly smiled mysteriously. Dee Dee was okay. Chapter 45 A Fantasy Dream You are listening at NovelFull.audio Dorian's team had finally returned home after visiting the famous medicine hall in the city. Dorian thought about the items he bought and was a little bit down. The quality of things here was truly terrible. In future, the alchemy department within the academy will have to grow their own and search for precious ones too. Dorian thought while stepping out of the vehicle. Butler Shin continued carrying the wooden box while Zhu Lin carried the items they bought. As for Rollin, he quickly marked the car before entering the house as fast as he could. The master said he should head to his bed chambers after he was done. So how would he dilly-dally around? Rollin dashed through the corridors and placed the car key back into its storage compartment before heading to the stairs to Dorian's bed chambers as instructed. And with every step he took, his heart drummed heavily, almost leaping out of his chest in one go. This was it, wasn't it? The master. The master was going to tell them something important, right? Rollins' lashes fluttered as he tried to steady his breathing the closer he got to the bed chambers that now seemed so powerful in his mind. It's not that this was his first time seeing Dorian's bed chambers. But now that he understood just how powerful Dorian was and even looked at Dorian with awe when remembering the battle earlier, he felt his entire body tremble when he thought of entering the Grandmaster's bed chambers. What should he do? What should he do? Should he kowtow several times, just like the cases in the fantasy movies? Or should he miss the floor and roll over? Damn it! After finding out that one's boss was mighty, what was the correct protocol here? The ever-imaginative Rollin had long thrown the blood diamond gangster imagination he had earlier. And now adapted the fantasy world imagination. Yup. He had already inserted himself in some world with flying swords and countless battles daily. His eyes opened hard with excitement. Could this be the start of his fantasy world? Big smiley face. Rollin adjusted his glasses and took a deep breath before entering the Grandmaster's heavenly room. Master. I'm here, he said while going down on one knee with his head down. Dorian looked at him and felt it funny. He felt like Zhu Lin and Rollin were a funny bunch. All right. I already got a response from Zhu Lin. So now, it's your turn. Bubuum. Rollin's heart drummed loudly. Could this be his acknowledgement ceremony? Rollins' imagination sure was rich. But his guess was close enough. Dot he listened to Dorian diligently and nodded his head as hard as he could. Master. I am willing. And I swear in my life that I will never betray the Tian household. Good. From this day onwards, you will officially be a Tian member. Now then, arise. Rollin did as he was told. Thank you, master. With that, he stood up to join the rest standing at the side. All three now stood firmly with their chests out, waiting for Dorian's command. The fact that he requested all three of them to be here meant that there was something else he wanted to say. Additionally, 
if it were just about joining the household, he would have dismissed them after he was done. But yet, they were still here. Meaning he wasn't through with them. Dorian glanced at them with a slight smile on his face. At first, I wanted to wait for you all to be gathered in one place before introducing you all to what it is we will be doing from now on. But, as things stand now, I think it will be better if some of you begin your training immediately. From today, you will be exorcists in training. Everyone's heart speeded up. Butler Shing's throat throbbed when he heard the strange word. Exorcists. This word wasn't in their vocabulary. But he recalled that the demons from last night's battle called Dorian an exorcist. And the hybrid ghosts also called him one. But why was it that they had never heard of this word? Did the demons delete the word from the dictionary? The more Butler Shing knew, the more confused he was. Why did he feel like someone or something was controlling information in their world? Cold sweat trickled down his back when something shocking occurred to him. The presidents around the world wouldn't be demons too, right dot right. For the first time, Butler Shing felt like they were fighting against the world. He just hoped he was overthinking things. Or else, things would really be bad. Dorian, who didn't know what Butler Sheng was thinking about, had been talking with the system this entire time. When he first came into this world, the system awarded him a B.grade book on various heavenly talismans and formations, which is a step up from the C.grade knowledge in your previous world. Of course, this also meant that the world he came from was a C.grade level world. He got a B.grade knowledge because this world's difficulty level was high. In fact, B.grade knowledge was just a novice gift. As far as he was concerned, this world's difficulty exceeded all the S.world difficulties and was in a difficulty rank on its own. The system had given him B.grade difficulty information to improve his understanding too. Like he said. His previous world was a C.grade low difficulty, so after absorbing the B.grade book on heavenly talismans and formations, one would find that there were more ways of handling things and more in dot depth as well. Take for example the case with the hybrid ghost. Back in his world, he learned that there were only two ways to exorcise a rank 2 hybrid demon. But after absorbing the B.grade book by the system, he found that there were actually five ways of doing so. It was just more advanced knowledge. That said, Dorian still found that the B.grade knowledge was something he had always known subconsciously. Even back in his previous world. It was as if it was rooted in his brain and had been suppressed by something. Which in itself was strange. Well, he didn't believe in coincidences. So the only way to find the truth was to grow stronger. That said, apart from the B.grade book, the system also awarded him a secret room in your bed chambers, filled with sanctified candles. And today, he planned to take them into the room. Host. You don't need to worry. Like I said, anyone you perfect can enter the secret chamber, from an entry point which you can set up yourself. So they don't even need to pass through their bed chambers and can also enter through other parts of your home. But, they would need your permission seal or something similar to a heavenly I.D to enter. Dorian nodded in understanding. He didn't like people going through his bedroom. Getting the system's response, he then focused on Butler Sheng and the rest. Today, your training will begin. Bararmam. Suddenly, the wall behind Dorian started changing, leaving everyone's mouth hung wide open in shock and excitement. Of course, Rollin and Zhu Lin were the most excited of all. Fantasy. Fantasy. This was the start of their fantasy life. Carrot Carrot Chapter 46 The Secret Room You are listening at Novel Full Dot Audio. Vrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
The blinding light lasted for just a second before finally dimming down and showing everyone a glimpse of the grand place beyond. Blink. Blink. Butler Sheng stood still in a daze, blinking severally, while Zhu Lin trembled with his mouth wide open, almost drooling in amazement. As for Rollin, he couldn't help taking off his glasses in the most dramatic way possible. Degree degree, dot silence. Error, error, brain cannot process what it's seeing. Mayday. Maybe. Brian down. I repeat. Brain down. Like so, the trio had their brains fly away like pigs with wings because right now, their memory chip had been overloaded. F asterisk asterisk asterisk. Does science actually exist anymore? Everyone just felt like they had been duped all their lives. Dorian looked at the trial and chuckled before snapping his fingers, bringing them back to reality. Snap. Follow me. Yes, Grandmaster. Dorian almost fell when he heard the way they called him okay. Soda started calling him Grandmaster, and now everyone else seemed to be calling him that too. Hello. Did he look like an old man with long white beards? His men had switched from calling him Young Master to Master. Only to upgrade it even further to Grandmaster. With him taking over, his father's title was upgraded from Master to First Elder. And his mother was also an elder, but a matriarch too. But now, they were already calling him Grandmaster. So wouldn't this mess up the order of things? Dorian could only shake his head wryly. Sigh. This world was too strange and funny to him. With the trio awake from their thoughts, they hastily followed behind Dorian, passing through the unbelievable doorway that had cracked open like magic. Even when passing through, they subconsciously touched the walls with trembling fingers to determine if it was all real. And what did they see? The walls seemed to be grumbling as they made little hissing sounds and jumped away even further, widening the crack more and more. They acted like the trio were disturbing their slumber. And maybe it was their imagination, but they could also see tiny eyes and mouths around the blocks that jumped away too. The trio immersed themselves in the scene, feeling that these wall chunks that had broken out like puzzle pieces were all too cute. Heh. Unbeknownst to them, without permission from Dorian, these wall pieces could become real monsters when activated by frogs. They looked gentle and harmless now. But sometimes, the deadliest things in the world were the ones that looked the most harmless. Like so, after stepping past the gateway, the clueless trio walked through a narrow hallway that had these wall puzzles along them too. And right ahead was a grand golden door with the full image of a fierce lion imprinted on it. No. They felt like this beast should be greater than a mere lion just from the aura and air they perceived the closer they got. Then suddenly, the lion's head moved and aimed its focus at them, causing their hearts to skip a beat. Mr. Lion. Gulp. Everyone couldn't help taking a step back when facing this giant lion head. One should know that the golden gate itself was probably what they imagined a heavenly gate would look like. Right now, standing by the gate, they were like ants, as the gates towered several feet high and also spread very widely too. Hell. Only a giant could open these golden doors. And the lion's head on the gate's way above them was probably five times their size, as it looked down, intimidating all who came. Rollin looked at Butler Sheng and felt aggrieved. Why was it that he and Zhu Lin seemed to be the ones who were always more panicked in these sorts of situations? He felt like he had to work on his heart more and become tougher. But little did he know that Butler Sheng's initial reaction was fear. It was just that his way of showing fear was to stay frozen in place. That's right. If he were in a scary movie and everyone broke out running, he would stay in place and be the first to die. Unless he awoke from the fear. Bloody hell. Butler Sheng's entire toes were curling within his shoes from the beast's gaze alone. And only after looking at Dorian did he finally calm down. Hey. It was normal for humans to fear something like this the first time they see it. But since the Grandmaster brought them here. Then, they should be safe. 
With that, Butler Sheng adjusted his mentality once more. As for the lion, the moment it spotted Dorian, its entire persona changed into that of a happy house cat. Welcome, master. Do you wish to enter? Hmm. As you wish, master. Guardian Pandrel replied excitedly. The lion's name was Pandrel. And he was the guardian of this space with only one purpose, and that was to serve and obey Dorian's commands. With that, the giant gates opened, revealing an even grander hall within. Everyone entered and once again felt like ants. The hall had empty shelves from the floor shooting far up for what seemed like an eternity. Looking up, they honestly didn't know where the lights were coming from because they couldn't see anything far above. So could it be that they had shrunk in size? The trio walled in with Dorian, observing the magnificent sight before them. The place was more like a library for the gods. And as one passed every bookshelf now and then, one would see on the library sections two like ghosts, ghouls, evil beasts, etc. Additionally, at various intervals, one could also come across tables, chairs and workstations that were probably meant for them when they wanted to study. But apart from being a library, they could also tell that the place must have other purposes due to some of the open rooms they saw at the side. Storage. Alchemy. Training space. Purified candles. For sure. Unlike libraries that had private study rooms, the rooms here were allocated for different purposes. Dot everyone took in all they saw, following Dorian diligently. And soon, they reached the very front of the room. Bam! Everyone turned around to find that the doors in the back had suddenly closed on their own. And in another swift motion, they turned back only to find Dorian smiling at them mysteriously. Berm! Who could tell them why they had a bad feeling all of a sudden? All right. It's time to begin your training. But don't worry. I'll go easy on you for today. Everyone listened and suddenly felt their palms turn sweaty. Grandmaster, you say that. But your smile and your aura aren't convincing at all. Chapter 47 I Have the Power You are listening at Novel Full Audio. Like so, Dorian and the gang spent several hours in training. Butler Sheng, Julian and Rollin, stood in the same position for hours, with them only ever moving within the space around them, as if practicing some martial technique. But make no mistake. Their entire process hurt their bodies like hell. F asterisk asterisk asterisk. What was this? Their bodies had turned all red like tomatoes and continuously trembled the more practice they got. They looked at Dorian, who hadn't even worked up a single bead of sweat and suddenly felt aggrieved. You know. After a while, they were praying that he would get tired and stop on his own. But who would have known that it would be so? Rollin. Straighten your back. Julin. Lift your arms higher. Butler Sheng. Your leg work is weak. The trio. Dot why oh why. They gazed at Dorian and suddenly felt like he was a trainer from hell. Not even once had he taken it easy, giving no room for error. The trio didn't even know what purpose this four dot step technique had. But spent so many hours doing the same time over and over again. And after a while, Dorian finally freed them from their misery. Bam. They fell onto the training ground covered in so much sweat that it seemed like they had just emerged from a pool. Th. Thank you, Grandmaster. Hmm. Dorian replied while looking at the trio, who were still struggling to catch their breath. Looking at them, he couldn't help squeezing his brows a bit more. Were they so worn out when he had already taken it too easy on them? Remembering his first time practicing with hundreds of people back in his old world, he remembered that his first day was far worse than this. So their reaction had indeed shocked him a bit. But there was no helping it. This was the path they chose. And nothing in this life came easy. Dorian had no pity for them as he calmly sat down with cross legs on the training podium, releasing his fierce aura at them. Get up. Yes. Grandmaster. 
The trio replied as their tired bodies instinctively moved on their own. And before they knew it, they were also seated the same way as Dorian, facing him quietly. Dorian saw this and squinted his eyes coldly. Too slow. Gulp. The trio took note of this in their hearts and secretly swore to improve whatever image Dorian had of them in his heart. Dot who wouldn't want praises from the Grandmaster. Wait. They had made it through the training, even though many times they had fallen and gotten up time and time again. Nonetheless, wasn't it an accomplishment that they could make it through? Yes. The Grandmaster must be pleased with them with such a feat with that, their hearts suddenly felt a little joyous. Everyone then lifted their haggard face to look at Dorian, only to find Dorian coldly staring at them. Underscore, today, you three will begin your journey as cultivators. As of now, you're all trapped within a mortal body. But with these sets of instructions I'm about to bestow on you, you'll break through it and become stronger and stronger the more you train. Shedding the mortal body is an essential part of exorcism. Dorian said in an authoritative voice, stirring countless emotions within the trio. Zulin's breathing became stagnant. Cultivators. Shedding mortal body. Exorcism. This. This. Words alone couldn't describe what he was feeling at the moment. All he knew was that his buttocks felt like there were ants in his pants. Julin became more and more restless while imagining his future. Dorian looked at them coldly, causing them to suppress their excitement once more. The path to cultivation and exorcism is hard and has no place for the lazy. Doing so might not only cause one a backlash if they remember a method wrong but might also get one killed for their lack of attention to detail as well. Remember this when you train. Instantly, everyone's expression turned grim. Yes, Grandmaster. Good. Before we begin training, every one of you will take an oath. The trio tilted their heads to the side in confusion. An oath. Dorian looked at them and secretly chuckled. An exorcist's oath was essential. So of course they would have to swear to the heavens to remain on the side of good. Everyone calmly understood what this oath was all about before repeating after Dorian and making the grand oath to the heavens. For sure, if demons existed, then didn't that mean that the heavens were also watching as well? Didn't this mean that angels also existed? From what they just gathered now, they couldn't help shivering a bit when they heard the brief but gruesome punishment that the heavens bestowed on those who went bad. Dorian hadn't even told them the full punishment and had only gone into it briefly. But it caused everyone to feel dreadful. Could it be that the real gangsters were those from the heavens? The punishment might come late, but it was very extreme. Knowing this, the trio made up their minds to never take the wrong path. The system, who had been watching them take their oath. Taking, could see countless streaks of heavenly light engulf them, meaning that their oath was being listened to. Heh. They say the most dangerous things in this world were oaths. And that was true. Any false move and they would then be going against the heavens. As cultivators, they would live for hundreds of years. And even though they were faithful now, one didn't know if after 150 years, their egos and thoughts might have changed. Humans were a very changeable bunch, always prone to temptation. But hopefully, that would never be the case for the trio, or else their fate would be terrible. With that, Dorian began instructing them how to cultivate. The chi within the space was the same chi around the estate. Dorian had spent time last night putting up a chi dot gathering formation around the house. So even though the chi was a little bit bad, it wasn't as awful as when he first came into this world. Butler Shing did as was told, clearing his mind and trying to channel the chi through his spirit veins. But so far, he would gather it for a bit, and it would fall and disperse again, causing Butler Sheng to frown. Be patient. You are too eager for success. Yes, Grandmaster, he replied before taking in another deep breath. Dorian was right. He was too eager and wanted to get stronger faster so as to stand by Dorian's side more. But his actions were what was causing his failure at the moment. Once again, 
Butler Sheng tried for a bit more, this time patiently. And after seven or so tries, he was finally able to circulate the qi around his body. His eyes widened in astonishment and joy. He looked at Dorian as if saying, Grandmaster, I did it. And Dorian in turn smiled and nodded at him too. In fact, just getting his acknowledgement had somehow made Butler Sheng's day. Ha 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 ha. The Grandmaster praised me. Smiley face. Like so, everyone was immersed with the joy of cultivation, that they didn't even notice that it was already 6 p.m. Today, they had trained enough, but none of them had broken through their mortal shells. Nonetheless, they still felt that their bodies were sturdier and their muscles were bulging harder than before. Eh. Was it just them, or did they feel like they could punch a cow, sending it a few feet away from them? Their lips quivered excitedly as they clenched their fists in determination. This was power. Star. Asterisk, Dorian calmly stood up and looked at the trio calmly. Come. It's time to head out. It's time to set up a stall. The trio, who were so immersed in joy, almost fell in disbelief. Grandmaster, you're joking, right? Chapter 48 Back to Work You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. The sun was still high up in the sky, even though it was already nighttime. From this alone, one could tell that this period was during the summer peaks. The traffic was still heavy, and the streets were packed with people roaming about in all directions. And within an open space filled with several outdoor vendors, a dashing limousine pulled up, calling the attention of the many fruit, ornament and item sellers seated around their stalls. Hey! Look! A wealthy customer! Damn! The car is too good. Looking. It must cost millions, right? Millions. Damn. If I have a car that costs that much, I'll never take it out for a drive at all. What if someone hits it? Lying trough. If it's me, and someone hits it, I'll not only sue you, but also beat you senselessly. Do you know what millions are? Not hundreds, not thousands, but millions. Look. Do you think that this person wants to buy something from us? That. That's impossible, right? Humph. What do you know? The other day, my cousin's sister's brother's aunt told me that a rich lady stopped by her stall the other day just to buy cashews. And even gave her a large tip later. So what's wrong with the rich buying out goods? The group all stretched their necks curiously while contemplating whether to rush towards the people within the vehicle or not. For such rich people, no one wanted to accidentally offend them. So each vendor kept looking around, taking a few steps back and forth, thinking of what to do. Even the girls passing along the streets with their friends or boyfriends, couldn't help turning their attention towards the vehicle too. Some girls were just curious, while other girls had other motives instead. Of course, some boys also wished that the person in the vehicle could be a cute girl or even a mature good-looking woman. What? This might be their chance to get a rich person to owe them a favor, so why not calculate? Everyone was busy watching the limousine, with some passerbys slowing down their pace pretentiously as well. And soon, the vehicle's doors opened, with Roland and Julin stepping out first, before opening the boot to take out several items. And at the same time, Butler Shin calmly walked towards the stall owners, making everyone's heart drummed vigorously. Butler Shing's attire was very well put together, with his gloves and even his pocket watch too. His hair was slicked back, and even his manner of walking was upright, straight and very domineering. They saw the noble, impeccable Butler Shing carry the demeanor of someone fully trained in a wealthy home, and couldn't help feeling overly anxious. Especially the fruit seller who Butler Shing was approaching. The poor lady's legs turned soft and wobbly like jelly as she quickly stood up from her seat behind the stall and anxiously awaited Butler Sheng. Oh no. What should she do? What should she say? Those close by her also perked up their ears in an attempt to listen in, as if listening to some radio station. Some also looked at the woman enviously. 
maybe these rich people had fancied her watermelons. Everyone awaited Butler Shin curiously, wanting to know what this was all about. The woman swallowed her saliva while staring at Butler Shin humbly. D. D. Dear customer, can I help you? Hm, I see that you have such a large stall set up here. These two stalls are arranged the same. So, can I take it that they belong to you? The lady nodded her head in agreement, with a lot of confusion visible on her face. Yes, customer. These two are mine. I work both stalls at the same time. Is. Is there any problem? Butler Sheng looked at her and smiled sincerely. Hmm lady. How much is it to rent your stall, underscore? Thirty minutes had gone by, and everyone had finally accepted the facts before their eyes in a daze. The lady who had been managing both stalls was the most confused of all. Who could tell her why these wealthy people would come all the way here to rent a stall from her? Everyone thought that they had seen a lot of ridiculous things throughout their years. But this one. This one took the cake. The lady in question removed her fruits from the second stall and combined them with her fruits on her first stall. Luckily, it was already late in the day and not the morning, so many of her goods had already been bought by passerbys and even those on breaks. Thus, she found space a little easier. Her stalls were also quite simple, making it easy for her to pack up and leave. The lady folded the money and placed it close to her bosoms for fear that someone would steal it from her. F asterisk asterisk asterisk. She had never received so much money all at once. Hell. The money she received for just renting her stall for today was so generous that it suddenly turned her stupid. It was as if a lot of money had fallen onto her lap from the sky for basically doing nothing. And from what these people said, they were only going to get the stall for three hours today. Of course, they also told her that in future, they might come here often to rent her stall again. So she was very excited about the money she would also recover in the future too. Everyone looked at the scene and felt very envious, with some regretting why they didn't have two stalls like that lady. Damn it. Just look at all the money they had lost. Many had no tears but wanted to cry. After the stall was acquired, Butler Sheng and Zhu Lin properly cleaned it up, removing all fruit stains, and also placed a blue cloth over the booth, and even hung a signboard above it too. Again, they also took out the foldable chairs from the boot, neatly placing them on the opposite side of the stall. And in the meantime, Dorian finally stepped out of the vehicle while Roland drove off to properly park it within one of the high end hotels several streets away from here. Everyone couldn't help looking at Dorian silently. Finally, everyone saw the real big boss behind the scenes, and several girls were stunned by Dorian's good looks. Too handsome. Grandmaster. Please, sit. Hmm. Everyone watched Butler Sheng and the rest treat Dorian with so much respect that they started to wonder what this guy's identity truly was. But when they read the words on the signboard, they suddenly froze in place, having another image of him. Hey! Could it be that this wealthy master was a little sick in the head, and his family would arrange for him to play like this? The ladies all shook their heads in pity. Divination master! Sigh! Who would have thought that such a handsome fellow would be mental? Alas! The heavens were indeed fair. Dorian couldn't care less about their thoughts and calmly watched the passerbys diligently. Host! Look! Look! That lady needs help. You need to exorcise more if you want to rank up fast. Hmm, then why don't you dealing with the few things around you? Noisy! Underscore, a strange light flickered in Dorian's eyes while staring at the woman intensely. How odd! Chapter 49 Women Were All the Same You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. On the sidewalks heading past Dorian, a young lady was walking hastily, carrying a three-year-old boy with tears in her eyes. She wore a long yellowish waiter uniform, with an apron tied at the front. Her hair messily fell across her face and bounced freely in the wind, 
exposing her swollen dot teary face from time to time as she held the little boy in her arms firmly. Dorian looked at her heading his way from a distance and instantly snapped his fingers at Julin and Rollin. Bring her. Yes, Grandmaster. The duo answered before leaving the stand, making everyone curious as to what they were up to. Even the lady and those in the nearby stalls who heard Dorian's instructions couldn't help frowning a bit. This wouldn't be a lecherous young master who had taken fancy to this young girl's beauty, right? They looked at the girl before looking at Dorian again, deep in thought. But no matter what their conclusions or thoughts were, they dared not stop this young master or say anything to offend him. At least they didn't know what he wanted to do yet. So how could they react? Some people were also afraid to offend this young man too. After all, who knew if he would target their poor defenseless families after this? The world was truly an unfair place. So what could they do about it? Everyone just shook their heads in pity, now thinking that this young master was both mental and lecherous. And the young lady who didn't know that she was being targeted, continuously ran with tears in her eyes while comforting the boy in her arms. Sister. Sister. It hurts. The boy grimaced and shook in pain as something seemed to bore into his heart, staggering his breathing. Hush. Hush. Save your energy. Sister will get you to see the doctor now. The girl said while trying to hold back her tears. Why was all this happening to her? The girl's hands twitched elastically from the weight and pain of carrying her brother. But she just gritted her teeth and blinked away the sweat trickling into the corners of her eyes. She dashed through the crowd in perseverance but was suddenly stopped by two men in black suits. Little girl. Please stop. Our grandmaster wants to see you. What? The girl looked at the very noble guards around her, and immediately felt enraged. Her entire body trembled from head to toe as she stared at the bastards before her in rage. Get away. I don't want to see any damn grandmaster. So f asterisk 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 off. With that, she tried to move towards another direction. But was once again stopped by the men in black. Ha 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 ha. At this point, the girl had tears of anger, spilling out like a waterfall. Why? Why did every little stumbling block or bad thing happen now? Get away. I said I don't want to see any grandmaster. No means no. What part of the word no don't you understand? No no. Those watching felt pity for the little girl, as they genuinely saw that she had an emergency on her hands. Soon, an elderly street vendor couldn't take it anymore and smacked his hand hard on his wooden stall. Bam! You rich people are all bullies. Can't you see that the poor girl is in a hurry? Why can't you all let the girl go? Yeah. Let her go. Don't think because we're poor folks, you guys can bully people like that. Let her go. Said another while waving a broom in the air angrily. Dorian looked at the scene and sighed before chanting a spell only for the girl to hear. And suddenly, the girl who seemed like a tiger that was about to claw Roland and Julin to death, suddenly froze in horror and stared at Dorian with wide googly eyes while remembering the words echoed to her. I can save him, L.O. The muscles in her jaws seized, and her legs now felt ten times heavier than they originally were. She stood rooted on the spot with quaking knees. And the moment she saw Dorian's mysterious smile, she almost fainted from it all. He dot he dot he was all the way there. And everyone was yelling hard and loud. So even if he spoke. How? How? Was this even real? The girl looked at the signboard and almost fell to the ground in shock. Divination master. She almost walked away in anger. But when she thought of the way Dorian communicated with her, her legs refused to move. The girl's stomach contracted into a ball the more she stared at Dorian with countless indescribable emotions running through her mind. Obviously, she was frightened. But still decided to take the bullet on this one when she thought of her brother. She swallowed dryly and yelled across to Dorian, 
curbing all her tiger claws away. C. C. Can you really save him? Free her. Let her go. Let her. Eh. Everyone who was busy yelling and standing up for the girl, suddenly froze and looked at the situation in confusion. Underscore, excuse me. When did that young master say that he would treat the boy? Berm. Sister, are you sure that you're not reading the wrong script? Dorian smiled and gestured for the girl to step forward. And very quickly, Roland placed a chair on the other side of the table and joined Zhu Lin, who was now standing close to Butler Sheng. Everyone watched the scene in a daze. What the hell? How could this lady go from tiger to a house cat in a blink of an eye? Hey! Would she have split personalities? Of course, some also looked at her in disdain. Heh! Women were all the same. She had been clamoring to go, pretending as if she wasn't interested in anything else. But then, the moment she turned and saw that this young master was handsome and rich, rather than heading to the hospital, she immediately chose to sacrifice her weak brother in her arms for a few seconds of attention from this sick young master. Pui. Several people looked at the 17.year.old girl and spat in disdain. Humph. To think that this was the girl they had been fighting for. Disgusting. Chapter 50 A Grandmaster at Work You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Just look at her. No shame at all. Ha. Hey. What do you expect from these youngsters nowadays? Such a woman should be very disgusting, right? Oh my. I pity her poor parents instead. If they knew that their daughter could sacrifice her brother for riches, wouldn't they be too disappointed? TCH. Who said it's her brother? Shameless girls like this would have already hooked up with several young masters before. That's right. In my village, there are a few of them who gave birth at fifteen with no husbands. So I won't be surprised if she's the same as them too. Hey. Who knows if she got the child from some old gold master. I bet the man's wife probably kicked her out and gave Bet Hill after finding out her despicable ways. Degree carrot degree, presently, everyone was very much appalled by this young girl's attitude. The more they thought about it, the more they felt that it was true. Or, how else could they explain the girl's strange behavior? They scoffed at her but still perked up their gossiping radio. Antenna ears to tune in to the frequency and listen in on the gist. What a joke! Even if they were a hundred percent sure, how could they still not listen? Like so, everyone quieted down and started working. Some began wiping their stalls, so much so that they accidentally started wiping some of their food items too. But they didn't even notice at all. Their attention was all on the conversation between the shameless girl and the rich young master. Why did they feel like they were about to what some soap opera here? Chio's ears were red with shame when she thought of all the shameful things these people had said about her. FYI. If you want to whisper, then why not do it well? She only felt like she had completely lost face out here. Luckily, she didn't know these people here. And hopefully, she would never have to meet them again. She thinned her like and tilted her head down in embarrassment, only to meet her brother's painful expression, bringing her back to reality. With that, she firmed her thoughts and looked at Dorian squarely. She referred that these people called him Grandmaster. So that's what she decided to address him as. G. Grandmaster, please save my younger brother. Hmm. Dorian answered, looking deeply at the boy in her arms before turning his focus back to her. The gray aura around her had a swirling and facing yellow air within it. But again, there were several colors around her that indicating a clash around her. Gray showed depression, and the swirling fading yellow streaks indeed showed the heavy prominence of death looming over her. But what alarmed Dorian was that the other auras contradicted this, showing life instead. It was as if her auras were battling with one another, the yin and yang fighting head. On. Lo and the lines on her face, 
the clearness and veins in her eyes, furrows above her face and several other visible traits were also conflicting as well. Again, the lines on her palms and several other points showed Dorian her fortune and misfortunes in this life. But somehow, the lines also seemed forcefully broken too. As for the boy, there was also a problem with his side as well. For now, Dorian couldn't see clearly what the issue was. Name, date of birth. Place of birth. Chiyu XX. Date of birth. XXXX, place of birth, Nataji village. And the boy. Chindu XX. Date of birth. XXXX, place of birth, Nataji village, the girl said nervously. Could this boy who looked around the same age as her save her brother? Everyone was also watching curiously as well. How exactly was this young master going to save the boy? And what did he need with their date and aces of birth? Looking at the scene, they didn't know if it was their imagination or not, but they suddenly felt that the air around them had turned serious. They didn't even know when, but there was already a massive crown surrounding the place. Eh. Dorian stared at the girl, deep in thought. Chiyu XX. Born. XXXX, your father is a factory worker, and your mother is a cook at a restaurant. From an early age to now, though your family is ordinary, you all have never truly suffered any catastrophes, having a somewhat smooth sailing in life. And even with the surprising arrival of your younger brother, things were still going in the right path, with almost no stumbling blocks on your way. But just a month ago, everything should have gone wrong for you, right? Boom. On hearing this, the Chiyo's mind exploded in shock, as she started at Dorian with big widened eyes. Grandmaster. It's indeed as you said. So what should I do? How do I get back on track?